Ron Scott here. Today I'm going to build a rig that will allow me to input two microphones into my Nikon D800 DSLR. Most DSLRs have only one audio input, and although it is usually a stereo input, there's no straightforward way to input separate mics on each channel. You could use a splitter cable, but then you're stuck with just one level for both mics, since most DSLRs don't allow you to set the volume independently for each channel. There are off-the-shelf solutions like the BeachTech audio adapter that sells for about $180, or the JuiceLink Riggy Micro that costs over $300. For my purposes, both of these are overkill. So I decided to build something myself at a cost of about $30. My rig has two inputs and two volume controls, one for each mic, and a stereo output cable that plugs into the audio input of the DSLR. The rig is completely passive and requires no battery or other power source. Here are the parts, the tools required, and how I built it. You will need a 2 by 3 by one inch project box to hold all the parts. In addition, you will need two 5K audio taper potentiometers, two 3.5 millimeter stereo female jacks, a single pole double throw switch, a short stereo cable with a 3.5 millimeter male plug, and a couple of sexy knobs. You will need the following tools, pliers, clippers, and a wire stripper, a ruler and grease pencil for marking up the project box, a selection of drills for the holes, a small wrench for tightening nuts, and a screwdriver for assembling the box itself. You'll use a soldering iron and solder for making all the electrical connections, and I'll explain the razor blade a bit later. And finally, you'll need some shielded stereo hookup wire. First, we need to mark up our project box and drill all the holes. Next, we install the potentiometers, the switch, and the female jacks. And now it's time to wire everything together. First, we run the ground bus wire from one female input jack to the other, connecting through one side of each potentiometer. I used uninsulated copper wire here, since I will be soldering some other connections to it later. Next, I install the stereo output cable. When working with stranded wire, it helps to pre-tin the leads by adding a little solder to each. Now I solder both the ground bus wire and the stereo output cable leads. When soldering, always apply the soldering iron tip to one side of the connection and apply the solder itself to the other side. This ensures a good electrical connection with no cold solder joints. Another tip is to make a good physical connection before soldering. Now I need to make a couple of jumpers for the remaining connections. I'm using shielded cable out of an abundance of caution to reduce the chance of picking up any stray noise or crosstalk. Removing the outer insulation from shielded cable can be a bit tricky, and here is where the razor blade comes in handy. Using an awl or ice pick, extract the inner wires from the shield and twist the shield into a single strand. Again, pre-tend both signal wires as well as the shield. Finally, I solder both jumpers into place and solder their shields to the bare copper ground bus wire. All that's left to do now is close up the project box and install the knobs. As a final touch to my project, I added male and female cold shoe mounts to the bottom and top of the rig to make it easy to mount the rig on my camera and attach a mic or other accessory to the top of the rig as well. Now about that little switch I added. Here is how it works. With the switch toggled to the right, the rig accommodates two mics, one for the left channel and the other for the right, with each channel's volume controlled by its associated knob. With the switch toggled to the left, only the left stereo input is active, and this offers two options depending on the type of mic. With a stereo mic, like the Rode Stereo Video Mic, the left and right channels of the mic go into the left and right channels of the camera, just as you would expect. The rig allows you to control the volume on each channel separately, something you can't do with the mic plugged directly into the camera. With a monaural mic, like the Rode Video Mic Pro, the output of the rig again goes to both channels on the camera, but adds a unique feature. You can set different levels for each channel, Doing so can buy you some insurance that you don't get clipped or distorted audio. 
Set one channel's volume to what you expect will give you the correct audio level for your situation and set the other channel's volume 10 or 20 dB lower. This way, if your live sound level suddenly increases and causes the first channel to clip or distort, you have a backup recording with a lower and hopefully non-distorted level. I'm Ron Scott. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if so, please like and share.